Oh, uh, waiter. Yes, sir? I'll have some sliced tongue, a lettuce and tomato salad with Roquefort dressing, and a bottle of cold Pabst Blue Ribbon. Yes, sir. Finest beer served anywhere. From Hollywood, Pabst Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere, proudly presents... Screen Directors Playhouse, production Love Crazy, director Jack Conway, star William Powell... The Hollywood Screen Directors present A Little Love, A Little Laughter. The motion picture comedy, Love Crazy, starring William Powell. The pressure of picture-making has prevented the director of Love Crazy, Mr. Jack Conway, from introducing his own film story tonight. However, our star, William Powell, won't escape the watchful eye of a screen director. As a matter of fact, our guest director has been watching him ever since 1929, when he directed Bill Powell in one of his first talking pictures, The Canary Murder Case. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the team of director and star is united again as we introduce Mr. Malcolm St. Clair. Thank you. You know, it would make a pretty good story had I told Bill Powell 20 years ago that he'd never be an actor. But I didn't. I thought he was swell. So all I can say about his success is, I knew it all the time. Now I'm going to join the rest of you in enjoying one of Bill's most amusing roles, the part of Steve Ireland in Love Crazy. Here it is. Once upon a time, a man named Steve Ireland lived with his wife Susan in the Winston Towers apartments. They lived in apartment 12A, and they were very, very happy. After four years of marriage, they still talked like this. Darling, I love you. And I love you. And I love you. Life at apartment 12A was excruciatingly sweet. And then one day... Into apartment 11A moved Isabel, Steve's old girlfriend. 12A, 11A. Wow! Why, it's Steve Ireland! Isabel, Isabel Grayson. Well, come on in and share my elevator. You're going down? Yes. Oh, Steve, I haven't seen you since you broke my heart and married the other woman. You're looking scrumptious. Really? I wasn't even trying. (laughs) What are you doing here? I live here. Then we're neighbors. I just moved in. Where's your apartment? 12A. I'm right below you, 11A. Oh, brother. (laughs) Remember that if you ever want to borrow a cup of sugar, sugar. Oh, yeah. You dropped your package. (laughs) Oh, thanks, Stevie boy. It's just some stockings I'm taking out to exchange. Want to come with Mama? Oh, Mama better keep her meat hooks off, Stevie boy. You know, I'm still married, kiddo. Four years. Today's the anniversary. Happy? Deliriously. I'm going out to buy Susan a gift for the great occasion. Ooh. Ah, elevator trouble. Well, I never did this before. Say, it looks like we're jammed. What do we do now, lower the lifeboats? Hey, look, look. Uh, there's a hatch uh, right there at the top of this thing. We're only a couple of feet below the floor. If we climb up, all we have to do is open the outside doors and crawl out. Through the top? Yeah, here. Uh, uh, Look, I'll I'll open the hatch. Uh, Now, now, if if, if you can stand on my shoulders... Well, here, put my package in your pocket. Okay, I'll I'll give you a boost. Well, I I better take my shoes off. I don't want to stab you to death. Oh, yeah, yeah, give them here. I never did look good in footprints. Now... Oopsie Daisy. No, take it easy now. Can you can you get those doors open? I I think so. 
no. Uh, give Jack. me a Porsche. No. Oh, I'm all right. Want a hand, Steve? <laughs> would, you, would you offer a hand to Climo, the human fly? <laughs> Here I come. Human fly just ripped his pants. <laughs> well, I'm a fine mess, covered with grease, pants all torn. Great way to launch an anniversary evening. We'll just tell your wife you were bitten by a mad dog. Ruff. Say, Ruff. stop snarling. All my other clothes are in the cleaners. What'll I do? Well, you might start by going back to your apartment. Very well, I will. Uh, goodbye, Isabel. Oh, uh, Steve. What? Don't look now, but your uh, slip is showing. <laughs> Tattletail. Ah, Mr. Ireland. Oh, uh, hiya, Professor Klugel. I'm, I'm in a rush, rush. Yeah, but, Mr. Ireland, what happened to you? Uh, I was bitten by a mad elevator. <laughs> what did you do to make it mad? <laughs> Excuse me, Professor. That dopey professor, always snooping around. Stephen, your back are... <laughs> Stephen, darling, what's happened? <laughs> the, the elevator jammed. Oh, good heavens, you're a mess. Oh, you haven't looked like this since you used to date Isabel Grayson. Well, <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I met Isabel in the elevator. Stephen. Uh-huh, she's, uh, uh, she's living here in the building. You look like you renewed acquaintances in a mix master. Well, uh, you see, the, uh, the elevator jammed. It never jammed before. Well, it did this time. And there we were. Yes? Oh, Mr. Ireland. Who is it? Oh, it's the bellboy, dear. Mr. Ireland, Miss Isabel Grayson asked me to ask you if she could have her shoes back. Shoes? Her shoes? Oh, yes, sure. Right here in my pocket. There you are. Uh, well, Susan, as I was saying, there we were in this jammed elevator. Mm -hmm. And you both took off your shoes and played toesy. <laughs> No, 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 darling, you don't understand. Her shoes were in my pocket. Oh, they were? Where were her feet? On my head. <laughs> on our anniversary? No, on my head. Uh, you see... Pardon me, Mr. Ireland. Oh, you still here? Yeah, Miss Grayson says she also wants her stockings back. Stockings? Oh, oh, sure, right in my pocket. Go on, dear. The elevator was jammed, and there you were. And Mr. Ireland, Miss Grayson also says... Oh, no. But Mrs. Ireland... If you say what I think you're going to say, so help me, I'll murder him. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Grayson also says thanks. You know, for a minute, you, you even had me scared. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, Mr. Ireland. Bye. Now, if you'll hand me my coat, Mr. Ireland, I'll thank you and say goodbye, too. Oh, Susan, you don't understand. I don't want to be unfair about this, Stephen. I'm going out for a walk and think it over. But that's silly. And do something about those pants. Oh, for Susan. Steve, Steve, the terrace, come out on your terrace. Isabel, she got me into this mess. She's going to get me out of it. Here I am, lover boy, down here. How's the little woman? Miserable, thanks to you. Isabel, I've got to get out to buy a gift for Susan, and all I've got to wear are these torn pants. Oh, I see a needle and thread coming into my life. Here, I'll throw them down to you. And hurry. Look, child, when I sew you up for another woman, I'll take my own sweet time. <laughs> Hello? Isabel, this is Steve. How's the pantsless wonder? Dying by inches. You've had them more than an hour. If you don't stop rushing me, I'm going to sew sandpaper into the seat. But Susan will be back soon, and I haven't even bought her an anniversary present. You talk about Susan while I sit here slaving so you can go around showing off, wearing pants. <laughs> Isabel! Isabel! Oh, bellboy. Got to get a bellboy. Uh, bellboy! Uh, where's the bellboy? Ah, uh, Mr. Ireland. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, hiya, Professor Klugel. Uh, is there a bellboy in the house? Mr. Ireland, you forgot your pants. <laughs> I did not. These, my dear professor, are invisible pants. Invisible pants? On you, they look good. Thank you, professor. Thank you, Mr. Ireland. 
Oh, uh, uh, bellboy. You calling me, Mr. Ireland? Yeah, yeah, look. Uh, you got to help me. I'm desperate. Oh, sure, Mr. Ireland. Look, you got to buy a present for my wife. An anniversary gift. I don't care what it is. Just use your own taste. But get one and get it fast. Oh, and, and if my wife's here, for goodness sake, don't let her, don't let her know that you bought it. Uh, just cover it up some way when you give it to me. Right, Mr. Ireland. Whew. Hello? This is Bertha, the sewing machine girl. <laughs> Your pants are ready, gorgeous. I'll bring them right up. Bye. No, 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 no. Steve, darling, I'm back. Oh, brother. Oh, Steve, I've been so silly. Please forgive me, darling. Oh, well, why, Susan? For, forgive you for what? For doubting your word. Tonight of all times, our anniversary night. Oh, and is it going to be a Lulu? Steve, here are your... Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, but we, uh, we don't want any. Who was it, dear? Oh, uh, the Fuller Brush Man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just gave him a taste of his own medicine. Quick brush. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'll get it, dear. Hi. Here are your husband's pants. Oh. What? Oh, uh, uh, Susan. Now, Susan. Oh, Stephen. <laughs> Susan, Susan. Oh. Isabel, oh. tell her what happened. Don't be silly. It's your oh. anniversary. 99. <laughs> oh, Susie. Susie, darling. Look, I, I swear I haven't set foot out of the apartment since you left. Oh, please don't lie to me, Stephen. Honest, darling. I, I've never lied to you. Say, Mr. Ireland... It's uh, me, Joe the bellboy. Oh, oh, you, you didn't leave the apartment? Not for a second. Mr. Ireland, uh, this parcel. Go away, get lost. But you just left it in the elevator. Oh! Oh, please, Susan, Susan, don't cry. Look, look, Susan, it's for you. It's your anniversary present. I don't want it. No, here, here, I'll open it. What did you buy, Joe? I never did have much taste, Mr. Ireland. Well, this is a fine time to tell me. It's a cushion. A nice purple satin cushion with a motto on it. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Look, dear. Isn't it lovely? Oh, it's hideous. See, there's writing on it. Yeah, go ahead, Susan. Read it. Bless our happy home. <laughs> Bless our happy, happy home. <laughs> You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Love Crazy, starring William Powell and introduced by Screen Director Malcolm St. Clair. You are in New York City. The big luxury liner with your friends aboard has just pulled away from the dock. You, envious, hot, and excited from waving farewells, walk out into Manhattan's blistering heat. Someday you're going to take an ocean trip, but right now you'd settle for a... Hey, wait a minute. What's that little blue sign across the street? Oh, brother. Pabst Blue Ribbon. Finest beer served anywhere. Yes, during these hot August days, you're just one of millions of men all over America to whom that Pabst Blue Ribbon sign means welcome relief. For Pabst Blue Ribbon does something more than quench your thirst. It gives you taste. Blue Ribbon taste. The kind of taste you can't get anywhere else in the world except in that Pabst Blue Ribbon bottle. And, fortunately, you can get that blue ribbon bottle all over the world. Yes, you hear it everywhere, in New York and New Orleans and Newport and Nashville. Pabst Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere. Your taste will tell you why. Now, back to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Love Crazy, starring William Powell. Susan, will you stop packing that suitcase for a minute and listen to me? I will not. I'm leaving you, Stephen, for good. Believe me, Susan... I've wanted to believe you with all my heart, but ever since Isabel Grayson came back into your life, you've told nothing but lies. That ridiculous story about the elevator getting stuck. But, Susan... And your word that you hadn't left the apartment, and her coming up here with your... Susie, your... I have not told you one single lie. You see? There you go again. 
I love you, baby. There's no such thing as a marriage based on deceit, Stephen. I'm getting a divorce. Oh, Susan, please. I'll raise your allowance. Ha! <laughs> Pat. Well, Stephen, have you any brilliant last word? I refuse to talk until I see my lawyer. <laughs> And that's it, George. Just because of that silly misunderstanding, Susan's going to divorce me. Well, Steve, uh, do you want me to advise you as your friend or as your lawyer? What's the difference? Oh, about a thousand dollars. Let's try the friendly approach. All right, Steve. Move into an apartment house without elevators. Yeah, that's that's fine. What do I get if I pay money? Good advice. I'll pay. Next time, be more careful. But there wasn't anything to be careful about, George. I love Susan. You've got to stop this divorce. Well, if she wants to file suit, Steve, there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> That's what's driving me crazy. <laughs> well, that would do it. What? If you were crazy, Susan couldn't divorce you for five years. No. <laughs> of course, uh... That's ridiculous. Well, yes, ridiculous. <laughs> Imagine me crazy. <laughs> That's very amusing. George, huh? supposing I was just to uh, pretend to be crazy. Well, in that case, it would take a postponement of at least 30 days to find out whether you really were crazy. Ah, and that'd give me time enough to convince Susan that she's making a mistake. I'll do it. Do what? Pretend I'm crazy. It can't be so hard. Any idiot can do it. <laughs> well, I tell you, we'll, uh, you have to have witnesses, you know. I'll get him. Starting with Professor Klugel. Well, who's he? Ah, he's an old crackpot who lives across the hall there. He thinks I'm half nuts anyway. <laughs> ah, Mr. Eireland. <laughs> Where's your parachute? Parachute? Ha-ha! There you are, Alexander. Alexander? Mr. Ireland, I don't see nobody. There he is. <laughs> standing right in front of you. Alexander, you insulted me once. Now take it back. No, no, don't move. Or I'll shoot. But, Mr. Ireland, I gotta go now. Don't go, Professor. <laughs> All right, Alexander. Take it back. Ah, so you won't take it back. Then take this. Bang. <laughs> Mr. Ireland. He's dead. Well, Professor, uh, what do you think of that? You know, I think he was crazy not to take it back. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Ireland. Uh, Professor Klugel, where are you going? Oh, that's right. You came to see me. <laughs> Good night, Professor. Good afternoon, Mr. Ireland. Here we go gathering nuts in bay, nuts in bay, nuts in bay. Mr. Ireland. <laughs> I'm a squirrel and you're a girl, and all the world's a great big world. Here we go gathering nuts in bay, nuts in bay. And so, Mrs. Ireland, in view of the evidence submitted by Mr. Ireland's counsel, this court feels that your husband's mental state is, uh, doubtful. I wish to investigate the case for a period of 30 days. Thank you, Your Honor. Susan. Why, you fraud. You're not crazy. You're, you're, you're crazy. I have only one statement to make. Yes? <laughs> All right. If you want to be crazy, you can be good and crazy. Now see here, Mrs. Ireland. Your Honor, isn't there such a thing as a lunacy commission to decide cases of this sort? Yes. You can ask for a ruling by the commission. It has the power to declare a person legally insane. Now, wait a minute. George. Oh, lunacy, schmunacy. What do you care, Steve? You've got your 30 days and you haven't got anything to fear from the commission. I haven't. Well, of course not. You're sane, aren't you? Right. Bring on the Lunacy Commission. My name is Dr. Pelgrim, Mr. Ireland. The head of the Lunacy Commission will be here in just a minute. Now, 
In the meantime, would you mind answering a few questions? Well, you understand this is just a formality. I'm perfectly normal. Of course. Now, do you... No, uh... I don't have bad dreams. I don't hear voices. I don't think I'm being followed. Anything else? Well, yes. Uh, I'd like... Oh, well, here's the chairman of the commission now. Well, how do you do, doctor? I... Ah, Mr. Ireland. <laughs> I've been expecting you. <laughs> Tell me, how is poor Alexander getting along? With this? <laughs> now, now, Professor, <laughs> that was just a little joke. Wearing any invisible pants lately? <laughs> <laughs> professor, I know what you're thinking. Are you familiar with this case, Professor? Ah, uh, yeah. In the immortal words of Dr. Sigmund Freud, he is nutty as a fruitcake. <laughs> Please ask his wife to step in. Yes, this is Professor. ridiculous. There's a perfectly logical explanation for my behavior if you'll only listen to me. Yes, Professor Kluger? Uh, Mrs. Ireland, I'm afraid we have bad news for you. We must declare your husband legally insane. Will you listen to me? And you, Mr. Ireland, will be put in your wife's custody for a period of five years. My custody? There is nothing... Oh, my wife's custody? Well, that's different. <laughs> Who's loony now, dear? That would be a much nicer arrangement than sending him to some kind of mental institution. Oh, you mean I can have him locked up? Whenever you oh. wish. Susan, no, you wouldn't. You might fool him, Steve Ireland, but you're not fooling me. Doctor, get the straitjacket. Oh, no. No, you don't. Oh, no, please, Mr. Ireland, you must resign yourself. You can resign yourself to a punch and a kisser. <laughs> See you later, Professor. You know something, Mrs. Ireland? He hit me. <laughs> know something, Professor? You're screwier than he is. <laughs> Steve, what in the world... Is... Isabel, I want a word with you. You look frantic. Frantic? They think I'm a raving maniac. They do? Why? Because I had an argument with my wife. Well, that's a reasonable explanation. And it's all your fault. Because of you, my wife left me, and I've been, I've been declared legally wacky. Well, that's life, kid. The bitter with the sweet, the good with the bad. Listen, my fine-blown corncob philosopher, we're going to find Susan, you and I, and you're going to tell her everything that's happened, the whole story. Maybe she'll believe you. Oh, sure. We're palsies, your wife and I. Come on, stop arguing. <laughs> You know, Steve, I kind of hate to leave this elevator. It has so many touching memories. Isabel, stop babbling. Come on, we've got to find Susan. Well, we don't have far to look. Here she comes now. Hello, Stephen. I see you haven't wasted much time. Oh, Susan, you've come home. Oh, just to pick up the rest of my things. You needn't worry about your sudden attack of insanity any longer. I explained the whole thing to the professor and how divorce is going through. Susan, Isabel and I have some explaining to do, haven't we, Isabel? You said a mouthful, Buster. If you kindly leave the elevator, I'd like to go up. I'm not leaving until you hear our side of the story. Oh, very well. Listen, Mrs. Ireland, I admit that things look a bit sketchy, but Steve's been a model husband. There, see? It all happened because the elevator jammed. I've been riding this elevator for four years, and it's never jammed yet. Listen, lady, nobody's trying to steal your spouse. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't have him on a bet. You see, dear, she wouldn't have me on a... Oh, you wouldn't, huh? Well, as far as that goes, I'll have you know that Steve has some very fine qualities. Well, certainly I have. Oh, shut up. Well, you can have him, the jerk. <laughs> he isn't either a jerk. Certainly not. Will you keep your big yap shut? <laughs> the whole thing was perfectly innocent. The elevator jammed. That's and... impossible. These elevators never jam. They... They... Never... Jam. I suppose we're just stopping for a hamburger. <laughs> This is the last laugh I've always dreamed about. Oh, Steve, I... Oh, Stephen, I was wrong. Is this proof in us? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so ashamed of myself. Darling, I love you. Please come home, huh? <laughs> I should have known. And Isabel, I owe you an apology. Honest Isabel, that's me. Steve, hurry up and kiss her. Or stop because my shoe's wedged in the elevator door. Good, keep it there. What'd you say, dear? I, I, I said, honesty's always the best policy. Stand by to be kissed. Oh, darling. 
You see there, the elevator's all right again, just like us. Well, it might be all right with you, but my shoe just fell down the elevator shaft. <laughs> Her shoe? Stephen, how did that... Fa- shh, 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 don't ask questions, dear. Just trust your husband. Oh, brother. <laughs> I've just heard the last act of Love Crazy. In a moment, our star William Powell and screen director Malcolm St. Clair will return to the microphone. If you were to win one of those radio contests where the prize is a trip to Hollywood with a chance to visit the studios and the homes of movie stars, well, you'd get the surprise of your life. You'd find that most of the picture people, even the glamorous stars, lead modest, simple lives just like you and me. On these hot summer weekends, for instance, the chances are you'd find them out in the backyard under a shady tree with their neighbors and friends, playing gin rummy or just chatting over bottles of cold Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. Everything in perfect taste. Blue Ribbon taste. And it's that Blue Ribbon taste that makes this internationally famous beer so popular, not only here in Hollywood, but all over America. Yes, you hear it everywhere. In North Carolina's picturesque mountain resorts, in Los Angeles' popular eating places, in Wyoming's famous national parks. Pabst Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere. Your taste will tell you why. Next week on Screen Director's Playhouse, Pabst Blue Ribbon presents Appointment for Love, starring Charles Boyer with Gail Storm. Now, here again is tonight's star, William Powell, and screen director, Malcolm St. Clair. Well, so much for love, crazy, Mal. Now, we've got some talking to do. You know, I think it's been about 20 years since we made the Canary murder case together. That was just about our first venture into talking pictures. And brother, I was scared stiff. Afraid of those microphones? Sure, it was okay for you with all your stage experience. But I've never worked with anything but cameras. But the way you use those cameras made motion picture history, Mal. I know that even back in 1929, having Malcolm St. Clair in the director's chair was one of the greatest privileges an actor could receive. Well, thanks, Bill. Thanks very much. <laughs> Good night, Mal. Good night, everyone. And good night to you, William Powell and Malcolm St. Clair. Remember, tomorrow begins another weekend. Two wonderful days to picnic on the beach, swim in the lake, or just relax on your own back porch. Be sure you have plenty of Pabst Blue Ribbon beer cooling in your refrigerator. Enjoy your holiday with friends and neighbors and Pabst Blue Ribbon. Finest beer served anywhere. Your taste will tell you why. Love Crazy was presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of The Great Sinner, starring Gregory Peck, Ava Gardner, and Melvin Douglas. William Powell also appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, who soon will release Madame Bovary, starring Jennifer Jones, James Mason, and Van Heflin. Included in tonight's cast were Mary Ship as Susan Ireland, Gloria Blondell as Isabel Grayson, and Hans Conried, Gil Stratton, Herbert Rawlinson, Bill Johnstone, and Dan Riss. Love Crazy was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Screen Director's Playhouse was produced by Howard Wiley with dramatic direction by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. Listen again next week when Pabst Blue Ribbon presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, production, appointment for love, director, William Siter, star, Charles Boyer. Screen Director's Playhouse is brought to you by the Pabst Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Newark, New Jersey, and Peoria, Illinois and sent your way with the best wishes of the Pabst Blue Ribbon dealers from coast to coast. James Wallington speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.